What's up beautiful people? This is Strawberry Tofu. The Gem 1 Kanto Pokemon are known for having really distinctive artwork. Back in 1996, Ken Sugimori had the job of taking the sprites from red and green and drawing monster artwork to go with them. Little did he know how much of a success the franchise would be. Nearly 25 years and 8 generations later, the Pokemon style has changed over the years. So, it got me thinking, what would the latest generation look like if they had been drawn by the master Sugimori Senpai back in the day? Now, while laying in bed, I definitely thought that this was an original idea. I later remembered it most definitely is not. A while back, I was shown the beautiful work of Anak Damien, who literally draws Pokemon from newer generations in that traditional Sugimori style. And on a quick YouTube search, I also found subjectively did this same idea only seven months ago. Figure that I should give credit to the clever souls who are quicker than me. So before we start, what makes a Gen 1 Pokemon look like a Gen 1 Pokemon? Spikes. A surprising amount of spikes that are definitely not visible in the later styles, even down to fur or hair being noticeably spikier. It's almost like Digimon came out and the design team went, ah, nope, we'll leave the edgy stuff to them. Teeth. Again, a surprising amount of teeth on show? I guess this almost comes under the spiky trait too. Dark spots. It was actually an Instagram post I saw joking about the dark marks on Gen 1 Pokemon that sparked this whole video idea in the first place. Another trait to disappear into the abyss. Simpler designs. Gen 1 Pokemon definitely had a lot less to them. Their designs weren't as convoluted and in my personal opinion it's almost like they were about to walk out the door, they looked in the mirror and took one accessory off. Frowns. No, seriously, there are so many Pokemon in the original artwork that are frowning and have eyelids. And then the other common eye trait is just to have no eye colour, just black with a white highlight blob. Actually, the most famous of all Pokemon Pikachu is a perfect example of this. And finally, watercolours. All the original designs have this watercolour aesthetic to them that includes a lot of white. Who needs colour dodge when you can just leave the space blank? So now we've pinned down what traits we need to include in our new designs, let's head to a random Pokemon generator and see which team of six Pokemon we'll be making over. Okay, so nothing fancy here going on, guys. This is just a screen recording of everything I did. I literally typed in po random Pokemon generator online. I found this website. I made sure that it was only going to show me eighth generation Pokemon with the English names. And then I hit generate. So the first Pokemon we got was Eskew. I'm not going to lie. At first, I was a bit like, oh, because I really don't like Eskew's design in general. But you know what, I can't really be too picky if I'm literally just meant to be picking random Pokemon. Second Pokemon that we got was Hatterene, which I was actually pretty thrilled about because I really, really like Hatterene, I'm not gonna lie. I think she's very, very cute. Third Pokemon we got was Wooloo. Perfect, a really simple design anyway. I was really interested to see where we were gonna go with that. Fourth Pokemon we got was Grimmsnarl, which is super intimidating because while I really love Grimmsnarl, I cannot deny he's a very complicated po looking Pokemon. Fifth was Orbeetle, again, another fan favourite. Uh, I think we've been quite lucky with getting a lot of Pokemon that people actually really like in these. Okay, and then I got Applin, and I'm not going to lie, I haven't drawn Applin. I was just like, no, 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 not doing him. He's too simple. I don't think I could really change his design in general. So I went for and hit generate one more time, and we ended up with Reboot as our final one, who is actually, funnily enough, the first Pokemon that I decided to draw. Let's get to this, shall we? Okay, so first up for Boot, I found him quite difficult, but I think that's because he was the first one that I had drawn. On the side, I put some inspiration for me um, of the middle evolutions from the first generation starters, because that is exactly what he is. He's also a middle evolution. I didn't end up changing too much about him in general. I basically went with the list of things that we have just talked about. I made sure that he had that really frowny face. I made sure that he had more spikes in his design because if you look at Rabuti, he has a lot of round shapes. I made sure that I gave him claws because there's actually a surprising amount of claws if you look at like Charmeleon and Ivysaur. And then I did that watercolor style of painting that, um, that all of them are so well known for. Next up, Hatterene. Okay, so I definitely feel like I was still finding my feet a little bit with this one. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Hatterene actually has this really cool thing where she isn't what she seems and she can kind of open herself up to be this really strange thing. And that's kind of what I really wanted to keep like the, the feelings of with this one. Because back in Gen 1, it was like, 
Pokemon could be cute, but that didn't necessarily stop them from having spikes and claws and things like that. So I really wanted to capture that aesthetic. If you can't see in the picture on the left, Hatterene does actually have some white dots on her, thi on her I'm going to call it like arm cloak as well so instead of changing them from light spots i changed them to dark spots and then obviously we did the whole watercolor thing again number three wooloo okay so wooloo was actually like really fun to draw it's already quite a simple design so i really didn't want to change anything about the design uh, we literally just paid massive attention to the whole spiky thing that we brought up at the beginning where even the fur can appear quite spiky and on the left you can see eevee and toro so like great examples of that so literally without changing any of the designs uh, we really gave him a more eevee face we gave the ears a little bit more spike we made those horns a little bit more pronounced we gave him the real black eyes that they have then we made him crazy spiky furry and gave him that watercolor look that they all have number four eskew so eskew actually turned out to be one of my favorites that i did at the end of all of this i really 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 dislike eskew's initial design but i'm not gonna lie i think i did a pretty good job first thing i did was made him a little bit chubbier and sit on the ground pokemon were known for being a bit chubbier back in the day like literally if anybody else has seen the diet that pikachu has been on for the last 20 years like i said we didn't really need to change too much about his design i made sure that his little ignition stick was lit so that people get the pun before it's even kind of happened and one of my things that i actually dislike the most most about Eskew is the beak and the hollow eyes in the ice cube as if he isn't his own thing underneath there. Gen 1 Pokemon tend to be a little bit more literal so I thought it would be quite interesting to see Eskew with the eyes and the beak physically visible so we know that he is literally something trapped in a block of ice which isn't obvious when you first see Eskew's design. Number five, Orbeetle. So Orbital was actually, it really stumped me at first because he has like quite a complicated design or like quite a lot of little things going on within his whole design. Uh, so I really tried to simplify that because like I said previously, there's a lot of more simple Pokemon in the first generation. If you think about it, he's a Ladybug Pokemon and the first ever Ladybug we see is in Gen 2 with Lady Bar and then Lady Anne. If we think about how simple their designs are in comparison to him, you can kind of get where I wanted to go with that however i did still want to keep him looking really fierce and angry because that is kind of the vibe that he has so yeah so that with all beetle it was a lot of just taking away this taking away that changing this a little bit also a lot of pokemon that have wings aren't really scared to have them out so much i find in at least the artwork for the first generation so i just figured that we'd make him look a little bit more exciting and feisty by doing that just again because it's a trait that we saw in all of the designs that i was looking through and finally number six grim snarl i did i save the most difficult one for last yes Yes, I did. This one, Grimmsnarl is definitely the most Digimon looking Pokemon that we got handed to in our random generation. It's similar to Orbeetle, I had to take a lot of different things away from him. And then there were a couple of things that I just had to change. So first of all, it looks like Grimmsnarl is kind of covered in hair, but it doesn't really look like hair in his design. But when you look at Pokemon that have hair, for example, Alakazam with the mustache on the left, uh, in the first generation, it definitely looks like hair. And I've said that word a lot now, but so that's kind of what we had to do. We had to make his hair look like hair. Then there's the obscure shape of his nose and ears. You would not have seen that in the first generation, that shape. To be honest, that's something that's completely unique to him. So obviously we had to change it. Now, Grimmsnarl is based on ogres and trolls. And when you Wikipedia them, the common trait that they all have is this really large down hanging nose. So I had to give him that. And we went with these ears that are quite a standard shape that you can find in a lot of first generation Pokemon. His body parts i uh, kind of ended up taking them apart to make them more simple um so there's quite a lot of pokemon if you again if you look to the left like alakazam and nidoking that kind of look like they have armor on them almost and i feel like grimsnarl really suited that aesthetic it did mean changing his feet from green to purple but i think i'm happy with the design and how that all turned out obviously we also gave him more claws on his um on his hands and feet because they're also again a very prominent thing in gen one and overall while well, this i think has been definitely the most drastic change in design i think i am really happy with this design and how this came out
And that was our team of six Pokemon drawn in the original Kanto style. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. I actually have a lot of fun making these drawing videos. So I hope that that comes across in everything. Uh, sound off in the comments below with what your favorite style of generation is. Does that make sense? You can definitely see different designs coming along in each generation. So yeah, please sound off down below with what your favorite generation style is. Please remember if you liked the video to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're new here my name's strawberry tofu we love all things pokemon and that's everything for today so i hope that you guys are all staying safe and healthy and all of that jazz and i will see you guys in the next one take care everyone bye